developing formulas for circles and regular polygons. Our objectives are to develop and apply the formulas for the area and circumference of a circle, as well as develop and apply the formula for the area of a regular polygon. Who uses this? Drummers use drums of different sizes to produce different notes. The pitch is related to the area of the top of the drum. Let's look at some vocabulary. A circle is the locus of points in a plane that are a fixed distance from a point, and that point is called the center of a circle. The center of a regular polygon is equidistant from the vertices. The apothem is the distance from the center of the polygon to a side. And remember, anytime you're going from a point to a line, the shortest distance is always perpendicular. The central angle of a regular polygon has its vertex at the center and its sides pass through consecutive vertices. Let's start by looking at the circumference and area of a circle. A circle with diameter d and radius r has circumference pi times d, or you can think of it as 2 pi times the radius, because the radius, if you have two of them, is the same length as the diameter. And then you have the area. The area is pi r squared. So let's use these formulas and try a few. The area of circle P in terms of pi. So we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we have area equals pi r squared. And our radius, since our diameter is 16, our radius will be 8. So we have pi times 8 squared, and it wants it in terms of pi, which means your answer in the end is going to have a pi in it. So therefore, it's just going to be 64 pi and centimeters squared, since we're dealing with the area. Let's try B. The radius of circle X in which the circumference is 24 pi. Well, we know that the area of the circumference is 2 pi r. Since we're looking for the radius, we'll use 2 pi r. So we have 2 pi r equals this 24 pi. All right, so we want to simplify this. We want to get r by itself so we know what the radius is. So let's start by dividing both sides by pi. And since it's on both sides and they're multiplying, they just kind of go by the wayside. So now you have 2r equals 24, and then you can divide by 2. So r equals 12, and in this case, 12 inches. Try the next one on your own. Now that you've had a moment to try this one on your own, let's try it together. We know that the area is pi r squared, and we want to find the circumference. Since they gave us the area, if we simplify this all the way down till all we have is an r, we can substitute that in for our circumference. So we have pi r squared equals 9x squared pi. Well, we can start by getting rid of pi on both sides. So we end up with r squared equals 9x squared. And since we want to get rid of the square somehow, we can take the square root of both sides. So if we take the square root of this side, we end up with r. And if we take the square root of the right-hand side, we end up with 3x. Because the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of x squared is simply x. So since our radius is 3x, we can simply substitute that in to our formula for circumference. So we have circumference equals 2 times pi times our radius, which is 3x, so times 3x, and that will leave us with 6x 
Hi. And we're looking for units here. So we've got ourselves centimeters. And since it's circumference, it's just straight up centimeters. Let's look at a music application. A drum kit contains three drums with diameters 10 inches, 12 inches, and 14 inches. Find the area of the top of each drum rounded to the nearest tenth. So we'll just kind of split the screen into three pieces here. And we want to find the area of the 10 inch, 12 inch, and 14 inch. All right, so let's start with the 10 inch. So we know the area or area for all of them is pi r squared. And since the diameter is 10, we know our radius is 5 inches. So we have pi times 5 squared, which gives us 25 pi inches squared. And if we were to simplify that a little bit further, we would see that this is about 78.5 inches squared. And we're going all the way because it said to the nearest tenth. All right, so now let's look at 12 inches. That's our diameter, so we know our radius is 6 inches. So we have pi times 6 squared, which gives us 36 pi inches squared, which is about 113.1 inches squared. And let's look at the third one. We have 14 inches for the diameter, so the radius is 7 inches. So we have pi times 7 squared. So we have 49 pi inches squared, which is about 153 and 9 tenths inches squared. All right, let's take it to the next step here. Let's look at the area of a regular polygon. The area of a regular polygon with apothem A and perimeter P equals area is one half your apothem times your perimeter. So keep in mind that this is for a regular polygon, meaning all your sides need to be the same, all your interior angles need to be the same to be able to utilize this formula for the area of a polygon. And then your apothem goes from the center directly to a side. Let's look at a couple of examples. All right, so find the area of a regular hexagon with side length six meters. Okay, so every single one of our side lengths is six meters. It's a hexagon, so we at least know that our perimeter is going to be 6 times 6, which is 36 meters. Trying to find our apothem is a little bit more difficult. We can use the fact that we know that inside here would be 360 degrees. So 360 and then divide it out. We end up with a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So halfway across, so 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we know this length is 3. So our S essentially would be 3 if you remember your 30, 60, 90 triangle formula. If not, please check out that video. And then across from your 60 degree angle would be S square roots of 3. So 3 square roots of 3 would be your apothem. So therefore, you have your area equals 1 half your apothem, which is 3 square roots of 3, times your perimeter, which is 36. And when you do so, you end up with about 93.5 meters squared. Take a moment and pause the video and try this next one on your own. Now that you've had a moment to try this one on your own, let's try it together. Let's start with trying to figure out our perimeter. So each side is 8 inches, and you have 5 of them. So 8 times 5 
which gives you 40. So we have 40 inches for our perimeter. Now we need to figure out our apothem. So they gave us that this angle here would be 36 degrees, and we can utilize the fact that this 36 degrees, and we have our opposite and our adjacent. So we can use sine, cosine, or tangent, in this case tangent, to figure out our apothem. So we have the tangent of 36 equals opposite over adjacent, which is what we're trying to find. So we want to solve for a. So if we put a by itself, we end up with 4 divided by the tangent of 36. And there's your apothem. So now we can simply substitute everything in. So our area equals 1 half our apothem, which ends up being 4 divided by the tangent of 36. And then multiply that by our perimeter, which is 40. And when you do so, you get about 110.1 inches squared. And that concludes our video on developing formulas for circles and regular polygons.